Hello, and welcome to this video about circular waveguides. In this video, we'll analyze circular waveguides in a similar way to rectangular waveguides. I've already shown how to derive the wave equation inside a rectangular waveguide, and we can similarly derive the wave equation in a circular waveguide. The circular waveguide has different boundary conditions, and we'll use these boundary conditions to find an exact solution for electromagnetic waves in a circular waveguide. So the first thing to do is to change the coordinates from rectangular to cylindrical coordinates, which is more natural for a circular waveguide, which has the shape of a cylinder. Its boundary conditions are now E being zero at any point R away from the z-axis of the waveguide, and the angle phi passes seamlessly from 0 to 2 pi, and then back to 0 again. And here's a cross-sectional view of the waveguide, showing the polar coordinates that we're using for the cross-section, and the variables we're using are phi for the angle, and rho for the distance from the centre called the radial distance. So now we'll expand the first vector calculus equation out into cylindrical coordinates. And this is what it looks like after it has been expanded, and it is a lot more messy looking than it is for rectangular coordinates. And then we can expand out this operator contained in the brackets, so that the variable E is fully incorporated into this equation. I'll just rewrite this equation at the top of the screen here. And the second derivative of E with respect to time is this. Since we are exciting this waveguide with a sinusoidal signal with angular frequency omega. Then we can make this substitution to get this equation. Which can be manipulated to be this equation. And this equation describing H can be derived in a similar way. I'll just rewrite this equation up at the top of the screen here. We can define E to be made up of these three equations multiplied together. We say that this equation is variable separable, because the functions of these variables can be separated out into their own functions. This is because the waveguide can be described symmetrically in cylindrical coordinates. So now we can start to evaluate this differential equation that we've abbreviated to DE. And to do this, we'll substitute this equation for E into this DE. I'll just write these equations at the top of the screen here. We'll make this substitution and solve it piece by piece. We'll start on this first part of the equation. We'll start with this small piece of the equation circled in green. We'll substitute this big expression into it here. Functions p and k are constant compared to the differentiating variable and are taken out of the derivative like this. We'll use slash notation to keep it simple to write. We'll use the multiplication rule to get this expression. And finally we'll expand the brackets to get this expression. Now we'll evaluate this second part of the equation. We'll make this substitution. Functions r and k are like constants compared to phi, and may be taken out of the differential like this. We can write it out in D notation like this, since there is only one differentiating variable. We can rewrite it out in slash notation to make it easier to write. Then we can simplify the fraction to get this equation. The z variable is the easiest one to do, we'll make this substitution. We can take the functions r and p outside of the differential, since they are constant with respect to z. We can then rewrite this out in slash notation to complete the calculation. So now we have these four equations. We'll pack them up together to give us this equation, including the time differential as well. I'll just rewrite this equation up here. Multiplying this equation by this expression gives us this equation. 
I'll just rewrite it here. We can already start to solve for k. k represents all of the waves and exponentially decaying functions that propagate through the waveguide. We may assume that it is a lossless propagation and therefore a sinusoidal function. Differentiating this function gives us this equation, which can be simplified to be this. And this is an important property of this function. We can then substitute this value back into the equation. I'll just rewrite these two equations up at the top of the screen here. And after substituting one function into another, we'll get this equation which we can start to simplify to be this, and then finally to be this after factorising these terms. We can then have a new variable, which we'll define to be this, and then we'll substitute it back into the last big equation to help simplify it. I'll just rewrite these things at the top of the screen here, and after making this substitution, we'll get this equation. We can then rearrange this equation by changing the order of some of the terms. Then we'll get this equation, which may be divided between functions of two different variables. Now we can start to solve this differential equation. I'll write it out again at the top of the screen. We'll solve p first, being a function of phi. We can see that varying the value of phi creates a measurement of the wave circulating around the center. It doesn't actually move around the center like this. This is just the effect of varying this particular variable. The rest of the equation will look like a constant to phi, and so may be expressed as this constant written here. We'll rearrange this equation. Then we can solve it getting a sinusoidal function, this is a good way of expressing the solution, as the sum of cosine and sine functions. We can then substitute this constant back into the main differential equation, which will give us this equation in terms of rho. So now to solve this equation, and it is a function of rho, which is the value of the electric field as it moves away from the centre of this waveguide. This is a Bessel's differential equation, and so can be solved using the Bessel's functions. So the known solution to this differential equation is shown here, with special functions j and n, with constants c0 and d0. These are all of the functions that we've found already. We can combine them by making this substitution. And so we'll end up with this large equation here, at the bottom of the screen, where it will fit. More work must be done on this equation, like to find all of the constants, which we'll do in the next video. So I hope that you have liked this video, and have felt that you have learnt something from it, and has helped you to master this difficult subject. Please click like and subscribe if you did. Please leave all of your thoughts and ideas in the comments, and thanks for watching.